everybody, and welcome to another episode of Theories and Thoughts Podcast with your host, is Anya and Fancy. Give us just a moment as we share to our pages. Meanwhile, we will tell y'all a little bit what's going on. <laughs> what's going on right now? Um, what else was I saying? I, my lips did. I have little lips. I know I'm always talking about that. I have a little lift, y'all. Anyway, we want to give our um, condolences and hearts and prayers to those affected about the mass the mass shooting today in Yuva. U- Yuva, Texas. It was it's close to San Antonio. Oh, because um, I wasn't familiar with the with the place. I saw the name, but I had never heard of it before. It's close to San Antonio because at first reports were saying that it was in San Antonio. But then I realized that it wasn't. Well, it's, it didn't say it. So as things um, progress, it was an 18 year old who did the shooting. Um, it was 11 people passed. One teacher. 15. 15. 14 kids and a teacher. And a teacher. I don't know what's going on. You that upset, kill yourself and leave people alone. Leave us out. I'm just trying to understand, like, why, if you're even, I mean, it doesn't make it any better, but why would you go to elementary school? You know, if he was still in high school, why did he go to the elementary school? So I was wondering if, just wondering, I hadn't saw this anywhere, but I was like, was this um like, a predominantly Hispanic school or something. I just was trying to understand the motive behind. Well, that. he was Hispanic too. He was. His I, name. I didn't see anything about his identity, so I don't know. That's what that was just my first thought. Like, were these like, why would you do that? And then it just came to mind, so I didn't know that. Yeah, he um, his his name suggests that he was Hispanic. Emma Emmett Adams is saying um, the last report, news report I saw was 15 and all, but she's saying 18 kids and three adults. So I, I can't see the. Oh, yes, I can. And three adults. Let's see. 18 year old fire. Maybe it just. Um, no, it says 14 kids and one teacher. That was 31. CNN is reporting shooting at Texas Elementary School leaves 14 students and a teacher dead, Governor says. That was 30. That was um, 31 minutes ago. Okay. So then it was CNN. Um, the suspected Texas shooter, school shooter, is believed to have shot his grandmother before going to the school. Uh-huh. <laughs> So every um this is a developing story. We just want to um acknowledge it. His name is Salvador Ramos. Oh, okay. Yeah. So hearts and prayers go out to um to the families and everybody that are um uh, everybody that's affected by this. On to um, so, how was your weekend? What did you do? Work and rest. Well, at least I rested because I hadn't done it since I don't know how long. So I finally took a day off, and um, it was nice. I just watched Netflix and spent some time myself. Really? Well, this was my birthday weekend. <laughs> so what did you do? So I was supposed to go to Italy, as you guys know, but. I decided to not go to Italy due to um, my niece totaled my car in November. My father passed in December, money everywhere. Um, And I had to go actually to see my dad in November. So what I was doing is I'll go for Thanksgiving and won't go for Christmas. But my stepmom needed me to come the weekend before Thanksgiving. So that was money. And then I had to go right back. And go in December and just life, you know, um, things happening caused me not to be able to go. I was a little spending, you know, my brother passed and not in March. That was another time going to New Orleans. And that's not to say all the other things I have to take care of and take care of stuff in my father's house. So I didn't go. Um, so I am doing we do. I do producing here on the show. 
you and I, we produce the show. We work as producers here. So I am taking my talents elsewhere. <laughs> I have a client that I am a media producer for her show. It is I Am Wife. She will be airing at 11 o'clock on the Fishbowl radio, um, the Fishbowl um, radio, Fishbowl radio. So I spent the day Friday with her, had lunch, and we went out there to understand how they do things or what have you. Saturday, I went to my nephew's baseball game. Um, I went to Coach Slim. He's a guy. He's from New Orleans. He sells snowballs. We say snowballs. What do y'all say? Snow cones or snowballs? Snowballs. Say snowballs. Out here, they say snow cones. And the ice is, is just right. Everything is good. He has nachos, your pig lips, your... Yeah, um, your chips, you know, whatever you want. Y'all know how we do in New Orleans when you go to the snowball stand. So he has that. Shout out to him. He's in Carrollton if you're in New Orleans. I mean, if you're in Dallas. So I went um, over there for a second. Then <clears throat> Amber, your media bay, um, Alexis Finley. I interviewed Alexis. Alexis is so cute. She has a new album out. Um, so she had a plug and play. So I went there on Saturday as well. Girl, I went everywhere. Then one of my girlfriends had, asked, um, had invited me to a family gathering that she had at her house on um, that afternoon. So I did four things on Saturday. So I did that, girl. We had so much fun. I love a good house party. And we was just outside, you know, just family, everybody just hanging out. It was so good. Sunday, I went and... Um, Sunday, they have this thing called, remember we were supposed to go to Lava Cantina? We yeah. went to Lava Cantina. We had a section. My friend, shout out Lee, she um, got me a section. My friend Shauna, Lee, and Bridget, we hung out, closed it down. Do you know, it's been so long since I closed a club down. Ciao. And then we were still outside talking and everything. Yeah. So we cut up. So that was that. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, Autumn, our MUA, she um, sent me some tips treats. She's such a sweetheart. Aww. And we went to Benihana's. So that was my birthday weekend. I enjoyed it. I spent it with my loved ones, people that I love that, you know, and everything. So, yeah. Hey, girl, I'm, I'm so sick of showing <laughs> Yeah. Did you know, like the it? wig is back? Hey, ladies, and um, Brandy Gray said you had too much fun this weekend. Hey, Brandy, hey, Brandy, listen, Sharona, happy anniversary, Sharona. Nice, and um, Brandy, I got on Nikki today, girl, because it goes with my um, my wig. <laughs> I don't know when y'all gonna see this wig because it is hot out, it's gonna be hot, and she ain't coming out. So I was glad that the temperature allowed me to be able to wear my wig or whatever. So that was my weekend. So yes, I did have a lot of fun this weekend. Like I said, I enjoyed myself. Thanks, sis. Thanks. And I did a what's up? Oh, you can finish, but I just I want to circle back to something right quick. Um, you can finish though. Oh, okay. Um, and <clears throat> what I was about to say, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say because I, I did do a lot of reading this weekend. Um, well, on Audible, so I um actually read Rick Ross's memoir, uh, Hurricanes, because I had read the second book, The Perfect Day to Boss Up, and so I'm uh hoping I can get an interview with him. So I actually went back and read the second one as well. So that was one thing I did throughout everything was listening to those books, and I enjoyed both of those. If y'all haven't read them, I invite you to check them out. They are um on audible as well as you know audible just to me is the best thing because you don't have to worry about waiting to get the book and everything but i invite you all to check those yeah, out i got you <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna look them up i'm gonna look them up um so transitioning um girl oh goodness being outside i had the the purifier on but you know anywho so olympian lola jones Lem um, states that it's difficult finding love because she's a virgin. She's a virgin at 39. She says she, it's exhausting. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, I get it. I get why it could be because some men don't want to take that on 
because they don't want it to be like she's going to be clingy. But I don't feel like virgins are clingy. No, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know either. But I don't know. I do think um, it's probably a big, you know, that's like a... Because, you know, she stated that she wanted it to be a gift to her husband. So I could really see how that could, you know, possibly put some pressure on a man. Because if you're not, you know, if that's not what you're pursuing with her marriages and what you're pursuing, then that it does kind of throw a wrench in your plans. But I applaud her for, you know, for preserving her virginity for one at the age of 39. And then at with all the success that she's had, you know, like she said, she's had plenty of opportunities to um, have lost the virginity, but she hasn't. So, I mean, I think that's really a commendable thing, but girl, I think most of these men trash. So you ain't missing much. <laughs> Listen, why? When I was reading, I was like, girl, you ain't missing nothing. <laughs> you ain't missing nothing. But, but it's, it's kind of crazy because you think about how often you hear men talking about, oh, you know, so and so been ran through and this, this, and that. And then here's this woman, you know, that has success and has a, a, is still a virgin. Like, and then you still have these same problems because men be at like, oh, you know, with a woman I marry, I don't want her to have been with a lot of people. Well, here's somebody with no mileage at all and still going through the same thing. So, what does that tell you about the dating pool? Well, I'm going to say this, and I had to learn this about myself. Being single at you know 41, I'm dating. Y'all know I, you know, I got my little boo. If you on my page, you didn't see him. Um, the thing is, sometimes we have um unrealistic expectations. One of my issues was you had to be perfect, but you had to deal with all my flaws. That was one of my things. And you know, sometimes we don't my one of my Patrice told told me today, she tired of making excuses for black men. <laughs> Because we was talking about something. It wasn't just that, but it was just she's tired of making excuses for men, period. And I get that too. Um, I don't know. I don't know Lulu's story and everything. She just posted on her uh, on her Instagram and I picked it up in the news feed and I thought it was interesting. And to me, I just felt like maybe she have unrealistic expectations. Nothing's wrong with, with having setting setting a bar or a standard, maybe. Um, I don't know what you was about to say. Well, I, I was gonna say, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having expectations because when I, I was when I did my vlog today, I was just saying, um, how I realized I overlooked a lot of things in my last relationship, like a lot of things that I wasn't happy about, um, simply because I was trying to give you know something different a chance, and then that didn't even work out. So, girl, keep your expectations. Really, if you think about it, this woman is perfect in a lot of ways. Now, we don't we don't know her personally, but I mean, on top of all of this, she's a beautiful woman as well. You it's know, beautiful. like she really looks like the whole. She looks like the whole package anyway. So okay. it's kind of weird that you know, but I mean, it happens. I mean, that's why I said, like I said, sometimes what I've learned about myself, and I don't know her. I don't know, you know, I don't really, really follow her. Her, But like I was saying, I had un unrealistic expectations. Like, if I want to see you, got to drop everything and see me. Like, I got issues with that. You got to stop. Go ahead. No, just even with you saying that, I was, you know, I was telling you about that book I've been reading, The Breakup Boot Camp by Amy Chan. I really mm -hmm. suggest you read it because she talks about how our childhood plays um, into our attachments. And she talks about the different attachments that people have in relationships. So I think that you definitely need to check out that chapter because it, it really helps you to see a lot. And that's what I'm saying is that's why I say a lot of women, especially, and here's another thing that I learned about women, sing, single women that we are now, we're, we're independent. We're not saying we're independent, but we move like we're independent. And when we're with a man, we want him to, we want him to leave, but we want to tell him how to leave. And a real man is not going to leave if you're trying to tell him what to do in leading. Now you can tell him what you like. And that's what I like about my friend. You know, he, he, he's open to learning things, but there's just things that I learned about myself. Cause I was like, you can't, Girl, you can't want this man to lead and do different things, and you won't tell him what to do. So that's it. That was I agree with that. Huh? I do agree with it. I'm not, but I'm not about to sit and tell you how to lead. If you're gonna be in that position, you already need to know what you're doing. Right. I mean, now if you ask me what I like and what I want, then that's different. But I need you to be able to lead. 
because I'm a, I am a woman who has been doing this by myself for so long. Yeah. And it is hard, but you have to understand I'm rough behind, around the edges, but be patient with me and I'm going to get there. Moving on. Um, Wells Fargo. So an exec was fired last week because they felt that um, Wells Fargo was having inappropriate practices they were interviewing minorities to meet a quota of interviewing minorities, but the positions that the minorities were um, were interviewed for, they were already promised to someone else. Now, this is the same bank whose CEO said there is not enough black talent. That's why they were not meeting their diversity quota. So just putting it out there, you had something to say about that? Not really. Um, no, I mean, it's shading and I get it. But and they were just saying that they were just trying to, I guess, put on for the uh, purposes of looking like they're looking for diversity. But I think more than them are probably doing it. It's a sad thing and it's a waste of people's time, especially in this economy when people are looking for jobs. But, you know. Yeah, well, it was called out and the exec was fired because he was questioning them. So if it was, if it's everywhere and somebody has questioned it, maybe they changed their practices. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so back to relationships. So this weekend, our week, our last week, one of them days, Supa and Reza made it official. So Supa gifted Reza a lot of land and gave him plans for building a house. And Reza asked her to marry him. So if you don't know who we're talking, who I'm talking about, um, Supa is a social media mogul, makeup mogul, um, Supa Sin. So of what? the crayon case, I think of it's crayon case. Beautiful to say. <laughs> To say that, okay. you know, to give her her full credit there. But of the of the crayon case, she's from New Orleans. So our TAT question of the night is, would you buy your man a house or lot? Put your, put your, um. Thoughts in the Yeah, comment. thoughts in the comment. So here are my thoughts. Going back to you can't you okay so I love the fact because I, I love reading captions I love people's love stories I love people's love stories and I was about to say Erin can tell us her story <laughs> tell us when she get on in a minute um I love people's love story so I'm always reading the caption and, and different things so she said I knew you wanted a long time when you just bought your house she was like, you just bought, you bought a house. And, no, you put my name on your deed six months into the relationship, like six months ago, which would have been, ha either way, it would have been the same thing because it's a year now. My thought was this. She bought him a lot, but then gave him the, the blueprint to the house. So you didn't really buy him a lot. You told, you telling, you I don't feel like she just bought it for, I mean, she bought it for them, but I'm having a hard time with the whole, the part of you give him the blueprint of the house. Maybe he have another idea of what he wants to do with the lot, but you just told him what we're going to do with the lot. Well, um, and y'all gotta know, I mean, I've talked about, I'm coming off a breakup, so, um, I'm not buying a man. No. Of, uh, I just feel like my experience with black men has always been bad. Um, so I'm not going to be trying to make those and type of uh, investments with people. I've already, even in my last relationship, I was already thinking if I ever get married, I'm getting a prenup. So no, I'm definitely not buying no houses. I got you. The um, engagement was was beautiful. It was. The engagement was beautiful. She said it's the easiest yes she's had. Um, she seemed really happy this time. 
it's amazing because I've been following her for years and I've seen her through at least four relationships. And I'm, I'm glad that she has somebody that she can really, you know, be there with. And they were friends first. He actually bought her a gift on their first, um, their first date, which was cute. I like that. I had a guy bring me a plant on our first date. He said he want. He said he didn't want to just bring me flowers because flowers are dead. That's cool. And a plant is still growing. Well, I see. Uh, Donald Lukey Smith said, "Why not?" Mm -hmm. Randy Gray said, "Yes." Um, Sharona said, "No, we can sign off together." That sounds more like a Brandy, but me, uh, Sharona, but. I don't know. I don't even think, no. <laughs> I don't even think we can sign off on anything anymore together is what I'm kind of starting to think. But again, y'all know what my mindset is kind of it right now, but I'm just not. I just couldn't see. I got three kids. I could buy one of them a house, you know, like before. I could buy my mama a house before I buy a man a house. Like, I feel like that's something that, or a lot, that's something that a man should do. It just... He set the foundation. No, she bought um she bought her mama house. <laughs> just throw that out there. Well, that's um, it. I also, I just want to say I'm not knocking their engagement. Like right. and I almost cried watching the video, but I also almost cry every time I hear of Tim's <clears throat> sing. So I don't know, but oh, yeah. I wish her Tim's. Um, she sings the chorus on "I'll Wait for You." So that's the song that oh, was. Yeah. Yeah, and then Tim's from the Essence song. Like her voice just sounds like heaven. That's the name of that song because I was trying to find that song. Yeah, it's by Future, but um, we're gonna have to sing some. <laughs> okay, but um, but uh, I think the whole the engagement and all that stuff was really beautiful, and I wish her all the best. You know, like she deserves it. I think everybody deserves love. You know, so yeah. As for me, if I had it, um, sure. If I had, I don't have any children either. And my mother has a house. Um, so, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Well, I, I, mean, buy, I, guess I get it. I will buy my, my husband a house. I don't know if it's my boyfriend. Because she bought the house, she bought the lot before he asked her to marry him. So, for me, if we're married, yes. If we're married, I'm just open because I feel like this is what we're doing. This is life or what have you. And it wouldn't be so much as I'm buying you a house. It's buying us a house. So I asked my friend and he was like, he wouldn't have a problem with a woman buying a house. I mean, but I'm not going to be her. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to need a ring. We're going to have to go sign these licenses and then we're going to buy it together. Okay. Well, that's um it for all the news, right? Before we bring on our guests mm -hmm. and run our commercial. Okay, y'all. So here's uh the theories and thoughts commercial. We'll be back with our guests in just a minute. You know, and I had a chance to just talk talk to her and tell her. And she was like, well, you do it all this and third. And I say, I have to. <laughs> Drop the mister. Just call me Rick. Hey, Rick. Okay. Hey, girl. I don't mean that. No, see, you don't need to work on that. Maybe this right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, good. so, fan. What the... <laughs> Well, thank y'all for joining us for this episode of Theories and Thoughts Deep Dive. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, y'all. What's going on? Okay, y'all. So we have one of our... Erin is always in the comments. Always in the comments. <laughs> always in the comments. And I was like, when are we going to put bring Aaron on? And I had to pick the right time. So, well, we had to pick the right time. I'm always saying, I, it is not just me. Y'all just talk like that. I know. It's, it's a collaborative a, effort. Right. I, I I'm the only child. So I talk. <laughs> <like that. laughs> 
I know friends be like, this girl always say I. Anyway, um, we know. so we have Miss Erin Pitt tonight as our guest. We will be talking Brandon. We will be talking coaching. And I think, was it faith as well? Leadership. Leadership. Sorry. Sorry. So Erin, go ahead and tell our guest about you, uh, well, our audience about yourself. Well, good evening, everybody. I am Erin Pitts. I am a small business consultant, but I'm also a leadership and life coach. I've been doing it now with small business consulting for about, about eight years now. And I recently just switched over about a year and a half ago when I went through my certification through um, the ICF Federation to get my leadership and life coaching because I saw that there was actually a gap that was missing in between the business consulting that I was doing. And even though you work through some of those things when you're talking to clients, it's always good to actually have the language and the skill to be able to do the things that you're helping people with. So that's just a quick roundabout about me because I've been over here tickled at y'all last conversation. <laughs> and I just I mean, before we get into all of that, I do want to say that I totally agree, even with the, the buy-in, the, the lot. I did see that as well. And I would have to agree that I think it's a little premature to do it before marriage. Now, if you guys already have something set in stone, and I'm only giving my comment because y'all know I would have been in the comments if I wasn't on the backstage, you know. Slide over a little bit. There you go. Because I'm like, we only say half of your face. Oh, okay. Okay. So first of all, congratulations, mama, on your degree. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a busy season. Like it's literally been graduation season in my house. So like my son is a senior in college. My daughter just graduated yesterday from high school, but I beat them both. So that's what I was about to say. So you, and I love that. So I was looking at your um at your post and you was like both of them graduating, but they get to see you do it first. Yeah, How important was that to you? It was important to me first and foremost because it's something that I always wanted. And I was one of the people who used to say, you know, a degree is just a piece of paper. But that was because, you know, sometimes in life we are we're not bound by some of the jobs we get and some of the opportunities that we have because sometimes our gifts truly do make room for us. So we're actually able to get indoors that we may not be qualified for just because we have favor or we have the skill or we can actually do the job. So because I was making out fairly well without a degree, I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to pursue it, but it's something that I always wanted to do, especially with me being a teenage mom. I didn't go to college right after because I was 17. So I kind of just jumped into my responsibilities, but it was something that I always wanted. And it's been off and on in a long process, but I did it. I didn't give up. I was like, you know, I'm going to take a class here and there, but I finally did it. So, yes, thank you. I'm so proud of you, friend. And yes, I remember when you was pregnant. Erin and I went to high school together and I was like, okay, wait, wait she was pregnant in school. <laughs> you know, you be thinking like, wait, what's this person? And that's how long we go back. So it's just amazing, you know, cause it took me longer to finish up my B, um, my, my bachelor's, mm -hmm. but it's just a test that you can still get what you want without it. But whenever you have that goal in mind, it's like, I gotta get it. You Even get though it. I don't use it, I wanted it. <laughs> Like, and I got all these student loans behind me, but I have a whole education degree and I work in corporate America and I don't see me going into the schools, but I can right. still use those tools. But I mean, even with your education degree, it's the things that you learn while you're in school that actually help you with any endeavor that you even decide to pursue. So you have that. And at any point you need to pull it out, you already have the credentialing behind it to just jump on in. So I always say nothing is wasted. So even if you don't use it in your professional career, it's never wasted. Yeah. Right. Well, I commend you on it. Um, I was a teen mom as well, and I'm actually about to be going back to school. If, if And I will say their name because it is so hard dealing with Southern University. So I'm putting it out there in case anybody knows somebody that can help me um, finish out my process. You can hmm. 
Southern oh. is a is 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 a lot. To, that's where my son is at. Oh gosh, and that's where my niece graduated. <laughs> Yeah, so yes. I'm just uh but I commend you for it. I I was I thought I was gonna be one needing one class, but the curriculum has changed, and so they're making me go back and add on these other classes, and I'm very pissed about that, but I'm just gonna push through and go ahead on and finish it out because I do feel like um in this day and age, you know, you see everybody getting their masters or their doctorate, and it just also kind of helps level the playing field. But at the same time, I have been, you know, successful without it. But I, right. I and also just as Anya mentioned, having those student loans behind me, I'm like, I gotta go ahead and finish this out to make this make sense to me. So I know, and those right. those student loans. I mean, any anything dealing with education, whether it's a four year university, whether you decide to take courses online, whatever the investment you decide to make in yourself, you are gonna run up a bill. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> true. So, Erin, branding, life coaching, like what made you say this is the route I want to go in? Well, actually, it fell into my lap, like a lot of different things. And it first started, I would say about 10 years ago, I had a friend who was getting ready to start a business and he reached out to me and he needed help. And I was like, well, I don't know what I can assist you with, but I'm definitely more than happy to see what I can do. And we started working on his like planning, like working on a business plan. We started actually, you know, going to doctor detailing because he was actually opening up a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So we started doing a lot of doctor detailing. We did um, advertising and it got, I've always been a good writer. That's one of the things that I have actually just been gifted with. And he needed help with his copywriting. So I started, you know, typing up all of these things, things that I needed to send. But I was surprised at how easy it came to me. Right. Because sometimes you disqualify yourself because if somebody was to say, oh, I need you to help me do this. And you've never done it before. Some of our first responses are mm, that's not what I do. or I right. can't do that. But. Most of the times people see in you what you don't even see in yourself. Mm -hmm. So for him to even step out and ask me, I was like, well, I'm going to give it a try. So I started doing that. And then from that, he had a friend that was starting a business and he referred his friend to me. So then it started literally a chain of events. Now, I was still working a nine to five at that time. So I was doing this still on the side. So. One person reached out, another person reached out. And before you know it, I'm like, OK, I fell into this, but I'm the type of person, even though it may come easy, just like I said, even getting into the coaching, I still like to have language for what I'm doing, because even though something comes to me, something as big as somebody starting a business, they're putting their all into getting this going. Mm -hmm. And I'm a person that if we're friends or if I'm helping you with something that I'm really invested in seeing it through. This is not just, oh, let me help you get started. This is like, no, we're on this journey together. So that actually put me into beginning to say, OK, well, let me go take some business classes. Let me go ahead and hire a coach in this area so I can, you know, get on the job training without being on the job. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I did not have that credentialing behind me, but even, I mean, we know so many people who actually are in jobs that they're quote unquote not qualified who are making six figures. But like I said, it is all about being able to do the job. So it really is something that fell in my lap. And I just, after that, just began developing myself and learning all things business. And the leadership and life coaching how I ended up getting into this is when we began like consulting and I began talking to people, we were working on things. What I truly found out is that people were skipping a lot of the process. Mm -hmm. They were just getting to the business and there was literally staggering statistics about people opening and closing their businesses within like, you know, six to eight months some within one to two years, but most black businesses not even making it to the five year mark. And I'm like, well, 
there has to be something to that. Like, why is that happening? And what I found is people were really skipping the process. So I got myself into say, okay, let me start with branding because I know what a lot of people think branding is and unpopular belief. What I believe branding is at its core is having core values. The aesthetics, the logo, the website, the color, the fonts, being able to buy product, all of those things, those are easily done. But if you truly are not really in sync with the core of who you are, it's going to really, really be hard to sustain your business because what happens when you start this business and you're putting out more than you're actually making in the month? What happens when you get the money and you're, you're making these decisions actually based on emotion? Like for me, one of my core values is faith. And faith actually drives a lot of the decisions that I make in my business, in the decision that I make even to work with the people that come on in faith, I believe whether you're an unbeliever, whether you're a believer, if you're not even sure what you believe as it relates to God, you're going to need faith on the journey to do what you are trying to do. So those core values look like integrity, because if that's one of your core values, you're not going to be trying to take the, the shortcut or trying to take no deals under the table if that is truly one of your core values that you're looking to help you sustain your business. So if it's not that, it could be customer service could be one of your core values. Once you start working through some of these, and I actually recommend that whenever you're starting, you start with at least four to five because that's going to give you a framework to even start your messaging, to even start planning your content. Because that's what is going to bring people in the door. But it starts with you and not only just knowing why you want to do it. Because, you know, the generational wealth and leaving a legacy, it became like a buzz term. And then everybody is starting businesses. And that's fine. But when you get into the Charles Waltons who've been having Walmart and they actually passing this business from generation to generation, that starts at a core value. That starts at the customers giving them what they want. So, if it's professionalism is one of your core values, if it's sincerity, um, authenticity could be one of your core values. But you start with that. And when you start with that, that actually helps you build your content. That actually helps with your messaging and your copywriting that you're going to be putting in because branding is going to be what people actually see and say about your business without you even talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very true. And I um, I like how you said that. I often think um, for me, kind of as a publicist and a visibility coach, it's kind of along the same lines of that. But I just how you worded it, it even just kind of gave me some ideas as far as like with what I'm working on with my clients, because oftentimes, you know, we're starting with their story. But I think if you start with those values, then it even that helps you better write the story. You know, so I it does. I mean, because that's one of the things when you're starting a business, just as every person is unique, every business is unique. And there's something about you, though, because you are the one running the business. And a lot of times you're not just starting it for other people. Right. Because you actually have to be the one behind it. You're the driving engine behind your company. And, you know, we get into even the terms, you know, when we start about, you know, just like fancy, as you're saying, you know, telling your story. That's fine. But even when you define those core values, when you're telling your story throughout, it's kind of like, what element do I want to start with first? Because you don't want to tell it all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that people actually want to gradually get to know about you so they can actually grow with you, grow with your brand. So it's kind of like what parts of these core values do I want to pull out now, even in the storytelling, you know, that you'll be doing and, you know, working with your clients. So core values to me is at the heart of branding. The aesthetics and all of that good stuff to me is secondary. And sometimes it's even further down the line because the whole life coaching aspect gets into a lot of the shifts that you need to make. And that's another thing, like I said, when 
you know, just in working with people, when they want to start, they have good reason and they have good intentions. But I don't care if you're a small business or big business. Every dollar that you spend in your business matters because them dollars add up really, really quickly. All right. So you need to be sure to have a good understanding and a good framework on what you're building on. So that's how, to me, all of these actually go together because you find yourself doing some of these things in coaching some of the small business owners who are starting because a lot of times you start the business and people, you know, want to start it. But most people don't even have a business background who starts a business. So they don't know a lot of the things that they should know about business. They want to start it just because they know that they can do it or they're confident, confident enough to go ahead and take that leap of faith. But and I ain't trying to preach or nothing, but, you know, just <laughs> like, in you know, in Luke, um, you know, it says that, you know, who who decides to build something without counting the cost? You know, because you start something and then all of a sudden you realize you can't even finish what you're even trying to build. So counting the cost begin be, becomes something that's really important. And I found myself actually going back to ask them, hey, well, have you thought about this? Or did you consider this? And then you realize that sometimes people have a mindset that's not conducive to really what they're trying to produce. So then you have to work through that as well. So even before I begin working with people, I always send out in kind of the introductory email that I'll send out. And I always tell them, I don't just get to business. I'm not that type of person because like I say, I am truly vetted in the outcome of your situation because it's important to you, but it's important to me as well. Because if I'm trying to actually make an impact in your business, the only way I can do that is if we take some time to actually see where you are. So I don't, I'm not a just get to business. And like I say in that email, I tell them if you don't have at least two weeks to give to development, I may not be the coach for you because I just don't work like that. I don't like to just jump in like head first. Like it's never just business first because I do believe like you still have to date <laughs> and vet the people that you work with. Right. You know, you might see something that I post that you like, but if we start talking and there's something about you that might hit my spirit wrong or there's something about me that hits your spirit wrong. I don't want an investment to already be made before we see that we're not a good fit. Mm -hmm. I like how you say that because a lot of times we forget that we're in, we're actually interviewing each other. Whenever we're working with clients, I'm, I'm trying to see if I'm really be able to work with you. Right. And you're trying to see if you can handle what I'm going to give you and if you're going to listen to what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Because a lot of times people just want people want to get to business because all they know is their business. They don't realize that there's so much more with that. So. It is. I, I definitely, definitely agree. And it's just it's the whole thing with the leadership part of it, because a lot of people they get in their business, they're always working their business. But, and this is one of my other beliefs. Like I said, unpopular maybe, just like I feel about branding starts with core values. I feel that even when you're working, you shouldn't always be working in your business. It's something that you actually need to learn how to lead. And leadership is something that a lot of people... They're not used to it when they're first starting off because you are used to most people are coming from being a worker. Most of us, we've been working since we 14, 15 years old. Like, you know, we've been having summer jobs, you know, when they were putting them out. So we've been working for a long time. So work is all we know. So you get that burnout and you get the feeling of, man, it seems like it's too much when you're always working in your business. But a chief executive officer, a CEO leads and makes decisions. They're not in there always doing the day-to-day -day things that actually run your business. You know, that's mm -hmm. where your chief operation officer comes in. That's when, mm -hmm. you know, the person who's responsible for operations. So don't get me wrong. When we're starting, we do have to be all the things. But there's a leadership aspect that I also try to make sure that I impart 
in the people who I'm working with, the business owners, so they can understand that there is a time where leading comes into play, where you have to learn how to lead and let the people follow you. Fancy, you was about to say something? No. Oh, okay. Okay. So give us some tips. Do you have some tips on when you want to start a business, how you should go about it and different things? Well, my, my main thing, like I said before, I think you should vet, first of all, whoever you decide to work with or want to work with, vetting that person, actually getting to know who it is that you're working with, making sure that there are somebody who actually not only fits with you, but fits with the vision that you have for your business. Because even though they're helping you, it's your business. So they have to understand how to go with your vision. Like they got to be able to run with it. Like if they catch the vision and it's like, yeah, man, we on this, we on the same page. You get what I'm saying. So that in the person for me is paramount. The next thing I will say, even when you're starting a business to actually, and a lot of people do it, but I would say to make sure that you do adequate research. And that's something that is also overlooked when you have people who are wanting to start a business. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with wanting to jump in just because you can. But just because you throw money at something, it doesn't mean that it's going to work. There's a lot of people who spend a lot of money on just throwing and seeing what works. But that's not always the thing to do. So doing your research to make sure, is this really what I want to do? Is something that is really important because you can start it. But like I say, are you going to stick with it? It gets hard. I mean, any person who is in a business making it work, you know, there's a lot of things that sometimes you see on social media or it can be some other people that, you know, the stories that you hear that makes it seem like it's a walk in the park. <laughs> and it's really far from that. I mean, a lot of people stay grassroots from sometimes and you do see traction. You do see a lot of good things that happen, you know, in business and things that can actually, you know, work in your favor. But it comes from being strategic. It comes from actually having a strategy behind what it is you want to do, why you want to do it. And then the next thing I will say is to make sure that you have the right people on your team. Be prepared to actually invest. You cannot start something if you are truly not willing to invest in it. So like I said, even when you start and we have to do a lot of things, but what I always try to recommend is that you keep money for growth. That is whether, let's just say you have a big project coming up or you have a launch that you want to do, you don't have to work in your business so hard because you, as even as a small business owner, you have the opportunity to go ahead and hire somebody else. You get to now be an employer. So go ahead and put that money to the side so that you can pay somebody to do your graphics, so that you can pay somebody to do your copywriting, so that you can pay somebody to do your marketing. Because trying to be an all one stop shop yourself is going to be one of the quickest ways that you can actually burn out. So having some money to actually start a business is one of the best things that I think people can do. If you don't have, and I'm not saying you got to have no $10,000 because it really don't take all of that. Right. But what I am saying is that you should definitely have money set aside to invest in your business. That's going to keep you from overworking yourself in your business. Those are really good. And I always tell people, remember your why. Remember why? Because People make it seem like doing business is so easy and it's not, <laughs> as you just said, it's not. Some days you have the the worst of days and some days you have great days, mm -hmm. but you have to always remember why you started because that's going to always be the thing that's going to keep you going. Yeah, it does. And realizing to me, even to add to that, Knowing why you started, but remembering that that can even change mm -hmm. because depending on what season you're in, why I started this business may be the same reason I need to go ahead and shut it down and revamp. 
let's talk. Can you talk on revamp? Because I think a lot of people are afraid of re a revamp. And mm -hmm. a revamp is, it. people do it all the time. Coca-Cola didn't change their logo. How many times? McDonald's didn't change their logo and their things mm -hmm. so many times. And then they add products. Taco Bell just brought back the Mexican pizza. They yeah. took it away. This is what people do in business. And I don't understand why small businesses feel like, nah, we can't do that. You know, in different names. I just recently closed my T-shirt shop because mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's consolidated in my one business and if i want to sell a t-shirt i'll just sell it right right me. right you know my what my coach she was just like look you need to consolidate you're doing too much mm -hmm. and i had to listen and you have to listen when somebody tell you that because they're seeing it from a consumer standpoint yeah and but the revamp can you touch on that so revamp or, you know, if people decide to rebrand, they call it rebranding or revamping your business is not a bad thing. So that's why we were just saying, remembering your why. It made me think of that because a lot of times people do say, remember your why. But you also have to remember that why can also change. So when it does change, what it does is it puts you in a position to say, OK, I have now this data of the three years, of the two years, of the five years, of however long you've been in business. It could be six months and people do a rebranding. Right. It doesn't matter. But what I say to that is even with rebranding and revamping, don't be afraid to do it, especially if it's the right move. But I do believe, just like I said, why I believe starting with core values is important. And it's not some of the other things that some of the brand coaches, you know, talk about when you start with your core values and it's you at the core. There's not a whole lot of revamping that you have to do, because at the core, you haven't changed. Right. At the core, your values are going to be your values because your values are going to drive you. It's not going to be the money that drives you. It's not going to be the followers that drives you. It's going to be remaining true to your authentic self and those core values that drive your business. So even in that revamp, if your core values don't have to change, if that's already solidified, now your brand colors may change, your logo may change, some of those aesthetics may change, but at the core, you remain at the heart of your business, true to yourself and true to the people who you want to serve. So I always say, don't be afraid to revamp at all. Like if that's what you know you need to do, just go ahead and do it. Like because the people who you have drawn in the people who are connected to you are still connected to you because ultimately consumers especially with small businesses they're buying from you like everything else whether you had a trash logo it really wouldn't matter if at the core what you were saying connected if your message connected if what you were saying actually connects with the audience that you've already vetted and has you know already bought into what you're buying what you're selling what you know whatever your services or whatever your products is because it's still you at the core so revamping rebranding i'm all for it thanks you have anything well i was just kind of thinking um earlier when you were just talking about uh oftentimes they're missing you know that uh those core values but also and just you know when you were saying like you've noticed i guess kind of that disconnect there i was wondering if it's because in this day and age, it's so easy for people to hop online, you know, on social media and be like, I'm starting a business, you know, because they see other people do it and they're not really having uh, that foundation in place initially. So if that could possibly lead to those chances of their doors closing in the long run, because, you know, I often meet people, you know, they 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 might actually be selling this product or service, but mm -hmm. again, there's nothing else behind it. You know, like they hopped on Canva, they knew all those simple things, but they didn't have that that foundation. And so I think I mean, if you thought that maybe that's possibly why as well, because it's just so easy to, you know, it's so easy to register with the state and things like that. Yeah, it is. It's easy. Like I said, that part is very easy. Y'all excuse me if y'all hear my dog walk. Okay. 
And the, when it's thunders outside, he's like, he go crazy. He thinks I just heard something. Crazy. That's why I got up. I was like, what is that noise? Oh, that's what, okay. I'm like, I did see you get up, but I didn't know why. But yes, it's it's thundering out here. Yeah, it's thundering here too. And I just heard like a big noise on my door. So that's why I said, that's why I was like, one moment. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> but fancy, I do. I definitely agree. You know what you're saying as far as the foundation is important. That's why you start there and then you build up on that. Like if you just say, okay, I've, I've worked with people and they was like, okay, well, I have this product, you know, that I want to sell and I'm going to go ahead and buy this and we're going to start there. And I'm like, okay, what else though? Like, you know, what, what else is there going to be behind this? Because anything, especially if there's going to be a product, you have to be able to sustain even getting this product in, but there has to be something that actually holds this whole thing together beyond just I'm doing it just because. Like I said, the whole leaving a legacy and generational wealth, it became a buzzword and people just started saying it and that's what they wanted to do because a lot of things, unfortunately, are, are influenced by social media. Like a lot of people do hop on trends, you know, just to say that they're a business owner or to call themselves a boss or a CEO or whatever the title it is that they want to give them. But there has to be something foundational that's going to be able to anchor you in sustaining that business. So definitely. I agree. A lot of people, what I find is a lot of people, generational wealth, legacy, I don't want to work for nobody else. I don't want to make nobody else rich. But you don't even have your foundation. You don't even know what you want to do, really. Mm -hmm. And not understanding that when you have a business, you work longer hours, you have less days off. And if you don't make if you don't work, you don't eat. You know, mm -hmm. and that before I started working for the bank, um, I've been I'll be with the bank 14 years come June. And before that, I worked primarily by myself. That means health insurance, health stuff mm. was on me, <laughs> all that, you know, everything is on you, your taxes, like you got to pay it to, like, it's so, it's so deep. And people don't realize that, oh, get your LLC. You don't even know what you're doing with an LLC, but you got an LLC because somebody told you you should have got an LLC. And when you get that tax bill, you got to pay taxes on a business that you're not even running. I tell people that all the time, like you don't really realize what you're getting yourself into. Cause even when you apply for that EIN number, the IRS think you're doing something. And that's the biggest thing. And, and so when y'all saying, you know, online, oh, they make it so glamorous, they make it look like this, this, and a third. And it's hard work out here. It is so hard work. And you know, for me, I, I can speak for me and my businesses. My coach was like, you need to shut that one down. You need to, you can just do that through this. And I was like, at first I was reluctant. Then I said, okay. She said, cause it makes it seem like you're, you don't have time to do nothing else because you got 50 million things that you're doing that you could just do under one thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you make sense. And yeah. I'm going to do it, you know? And, but you have to be willing to listen. You got to be coachable. You got to be coachable. That that is something, and especially you know that as a coach yourself, you have to be coachable. You have to be able to, you know, take direction, take instruction, and be open to receiving a perspective that's different than your own. Right. Sorry, yeah. I was texting my neighbor, like, did you hear that? And he was like, It sounded like somebody was at his door too. So something that happened outside, then I'm gonna leave it out there. <laughs> so if y'all see me looking down, looking at my phone, that's what it is. Cause I don't want to seem rude. That's why I was like. I know. And I, I had to look down at my phone, too, because, of course, I had to drop my son off at um at basketball practice before this even started. So I just had to tell my other son, could he go please pick him up for me? Oh, <laughs> well, well, we're uh, wrapping it up. What you say? Sir? Well, I was just going to uh, acknowledge Brandy's comments. So Brandy was saying really good interview. Thank you, Brandy. Thank and you, Brandy. she also said, yes, it's hard work. I just wanted to make sure we got those seen. You guys know Brandy. Brandy is the um, creator of Candy Lady Cosmetics. Erin is actually her brand, what do you call it? Brand manager, head brand manager? Well, brand and content director. Brand and content director. Um, right now, I have on Nikki. I have like four shades of lipstick from her. Mm -hmm. But what I'm feeling is, on you. let me tell y'all something. If y'all see me any this weekend that knew that I was wearing, that's from the Candy Lady. 
That's my favorite. I, hands down, out of all the listings, everything I have. That listen, that's that from that from Dilla Crumb. Listen, that is my favorite. <laughs> I wear every listen. I was telling, I was showing somebody this picture earlier, and I was like, "Get into this nude, honey." She said, "I can't wear nude." I was like, "Girl, I know you see this nude." Nancy, do you have it? Uh, no, I don't have that one. I have the uh, sugar babe, and I don't. I'm I wear lipstick, but that's typically like what I go to because I I don't know. I'm not really used to the color, so that one actually works perfect for me. Okay. Well, we're going to send you a creme de la creme because, I mean, you can't not like it. Really. I'm telling you, it's everything. And I get compliments on it, of course. And I just, this weekend, I just, look, it was just on. It was on with this hair and everything, you know. Yeah, just, the hair, the hair is definitely giving. <laughs> Listen, that lip gloss, honey. I need to buy me like four or five before she went out. And then I. <laughs> yes. Because when I seen y'all post it, I was like, I got to get it. And I, I went and ordered it. All right. I had ordered it. I was like, look, I'm about to get it. So you guys know we love Brandy. We love Aaron. Thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us tonight. Brandy, do you have anything extra? You said how Brandy. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, um, Aaron. any last words that you would like to say to our audience? I would just um, first like to say thank you, ladies, for inviting me on tonight. I definitely you enjoyed our you. conversation. So I'm sure this probably won't be the last time that we talk. You know? <laughs> it'll, it'll probably be something else, you know. But um, thank you definitely for the invitation. And I would say for... Anyone who wants to stay connected with me, they can follow me on Instagram at Build with Aaron. And you can also shoot me an email at connect at buildwithaaron.com. And my website is going to be finished. I was hoping to have it finished, but this May, I'm telling you, this whole month <laughs> has been one of them like, okay, I'm going to find time to go ahead and finish it. And especially when you're doing it yourself, because it was one of the things I was like, you know what, I'm doing it. I need to redo it. And um, and that'll be buildwithaaron.com. So that's pretty simple. So on across the platforms is Build with Aaron uh, that you can follow me. So that's it, ladies. You guys see it right here scrolling at the bottom. Build, spell just like that with Aaron, E-R-I-N. So make sure you guys um, hit her up. I just, she's a wealth of knowledge. I love talking to her. She give you that spiritual aspect as well, honey. She will drop them gems. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Um, and like I said, I've been we've been just like, okay, when we gonna get on? When we gonna get her on? And I was like, this will be the perfect time. And then I seen you was about to graduate, and I was like, your children graduate. I was like, this is the perfect time. This is a winning season. Let's it's tap in. Right? It's it's graduation season. Like we we not stopping. Like let's go. Let's, let's go. keep this train going. Yes, ma'am. So thank you so much, Aaron. We talk to you later. Bye, y'all. So yes, I told you I have Nikki on. I like Nikki. Nikki was like one of my first colors that I got. I have like one, two, three. I think I got four colors, four um, four lipsticks. I think I may have four lip glosses too. Yeah, because if I see it, I'll be like, oh my. And then I do the eyeshadow, of course. I was, um, if you guys look at my vlog today, I was getting ready and I showed y'all my my um palette. <laughs> so yes, um, I have my shirt on that says your auntie could never <laughs> because it was my birthday. Anywho, um where can you find me? You can find me at ladyceo.com. I am on Instagram at lady spell with an I dot CEO. My email is a R N Y A at ladyceo.com. And I am on clubhouse at ladyceo.com. I'm also on TikTok and I'm, um, we're going to update my ticker okay. to, um, show mine and it's ladyceo. That's all. Um, also fancy dropped in the comments, the, um, Aaron's um, email address if you guys want to connect with her. Fancy. 
Um, so you guys can find me, um, Carl Saw Social Media is S Swagger Magazine. And then um, for my own personal social media, everything is Fancy Swagger. I'm really kind of not posting much right now. Um, but yeah. And uh, I did want to say that Thursday we are hosting our Reclaiming My Mind event on Eventbrite. It's going to be, um, well, the tickets are on Eventbrite, but it's going to be taking place on AirMeet. So you guys can register for the event here at bit.ly backslash swagger rmm for reclaiming my mind and it is a free event and uh we'll have vendors as well as speakers and we just invite you all out i'll be there i have my ticket already oh i forgot to tell y'all we did the real remix lab what month were you here in april mm -hmm. In April, we did the rail, the rail remix. We're bringing it back in June. So you can go to my page. I have it there. You can go to my link tree. It's there. If you go to my Instagram, go to my bio link tree, and you'll find it where you can get tickets for the rail remix. Last month, we sold out two weeks prior to the event. So you do not want to miss it. Um, <clears throat> the videos is on my TikTok. It's on my page. We had a great time. We was working on the rail. So don't miss it. Okay. So uh, that's it. We'll talk to y'all later. Get some lessons. Bye.